Welcome to the Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian, episode number 18. This episode is arguably the most anticipated episode I've ever recorded since uh, since starting this podcast. This episode is the one, the only, the super talented and hilarious Danica Rockwood. Now Danica, Danica, it, well, how do I put this? Danica is a, one of my one of my favorite people. Um, we we've become really good friends over the last uh, oh, I think almost almost two years now, something like that. Um, and Danica, we we I've mentioned this on other podcasts, but we recorded one of the best podcasts I've ever done. We, we covered these, this multitude of topics. It was great. We got emotional. It was fantastic. Um, but then we found out it wasn't recording. And I still haven't forgiven myself for it, but uh, we 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 cover that. Um, this episode is fantastic, and um, me and Danica are able to kind of riff off each other, so we never know what's going to happen when we start recording. And <laughs> in this episode, I mean, we talk about uh, how she accidentally ended up at a gay bar. We talk about strip clubs. We talk about um, how she started working with David Love, who is one of the most talented people on the planet. Um, this was recorded at Geek Fest, which was actually months ago, and um, I meant to put it out, but uh, we had to. Uh, I had to edit it, and then I ended up doing a bunch of traveling, and then I was acting in a bunch of different projects. So it just kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed. Um, so we talk about episode seven because it was fairly fresh. Um, I go on another rant of Game of Thrones. Sorry, guys. It's really uh, I like it. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, and then we cover, we cover the myth, um, of Danica being anti-pants. You, uh, you find out the answer to that question in this great episode. And, um, uh, last little fun bit. This is going to be a part one. It's going to be a part one of a two-part podcast with Danica because we talked for about, um, we'll say about 45 minutes in this episode, but then she had to go to a panel. Um, and then when she came back, we talked for another hour or so. I believe it was maybe maybe over an hour. Um, but, uh, yeah, so this is a thing that is awesome. You guys are really going to like it. Danica's the best. Um, but, yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking because uh, I tend to ramble, especially in the intros. So, without further ado, this is... The Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian, episode 18, with the one and only Dahlia Thomas. No, sorry, Danica Rockwood. And roll the theme song. These are the numbers that we're, I was hoping was going last time we did it. So it's recording now. Now it's recording. Now it's recording. Now it is recording with new batteries. And it was recording now. Yep. All so right. we're, we're at Geek Fest. We are at Geek Fest. This is also, I think, maybe the first podcast I've ever opened up with the location. Oh, really? <laughs> you usually just don't tell just anybody where you're at? I just start talking, and then I, in the intro, after I get done, because what I do is I record it, and then I listen to it all and edit it. And yeah. then I record the intro at the end, so I know what to say. Like, oh, oh we okay. talked about this, and blah blah okay. blah. So I've never been like, oh hey, coming to you live from this, because at a gay bar. Yeah, I'm at a gay bar called Geek Fest. Just <laughs> kidding, <laughs> Gonzo. It's kind of like a gay bar. It's kind of like a gay bar. I've never been to a gay bar. Is it? Kinda? I've been to a gay bar. Is it kind of like Geek Fest? Um, no. Oh. It's kind of. <laughs> if, if I could relate it to something like an event, it's more like a music festival. Okay. Everybody loves you. Everybody's your friend, and there's really loud music. Is everyone dressed well? 
Yes. Okay, just making sure, because I have and this idea like, that... And, like, practically not dressed, but, yeah. Okay, as long as they're practically not dressed well. I was really inebriated when I was at a gay bar. That and actually would make sense while you were there. Yeah, and it was actually... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Gonzo has the coolest Gonzo's voice. Gonzo's voice is the best. Yeah. Sorry, am I interrupting your podcast? Nope, we're just talking about it. talking about your angelic voice. My angelic voice. Hello, everyone. This is Gonzo from Gonzo Radio. Oh, it's uh, beautiful. Not a radio podcast any longer, nope. but a television show. Oh! But as you can hear, I have a face for radio. <laughs> I was on that. Yes, you certainly were. His yep. voice is just beautiful. Yeah, isn't it? Oh, oh, you stop it. I'm blushing. <laughs> Where'd you get cake? Over there. What the are you cake. talking about? It's no, a I haven't. Party. Okay, whose birthday? It's my cheat day. Whose birthday is it? Well, I'm not going to answer until I get a microphone in front of my mouth. Well, I'm going to... Well, uh, it's, it's, it's Frank's birthday. Who's Frank? Uh, the guy who had the birthday. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the green shirt. He's part of the 17th of... Are you Frank? <laughs> Are you Frank? <laughs> Let me start asking people. <laughs> he had a green Is it your birthday? Shirt. Are you Frank? I'm not Frank. You're not Frank. I'm not Frank. I've got so I don't care. That counts. Right. But anyway, about the gay bars. About the gay bars. <laughs> yeah, right back to it. <laughs> <laughs> I was inebriated, and I was at another bar. Yes, and, um, not a gay bar. Not a gay bar. And you decided it was to a change straight the bar game. Or it was a whatever bar. It was a straight bar. <laughs> it was like a democratic bar. You give you whatever you want, and it doesn't matter. Okay. Everyone had a say in what happened. So, uh, yeah. um, you vote on the next round of drinks. You vote on the next uh, <laughs> amount of people that can come inside. But anyway, yeah, she was like, oh, I got an idea. Let's go over here. And we were like hanging out. And I ran across the street with her, and I realized I was at a gay bar because a lot of girls kept trying to play with my hair. Oh. And then they kept being like, let's dance. And I was like, okay. And then uh, the girl that dragged me over to that bar started, like, coming on to me really weird. And I was like, whatever, she's just really drunk, but I'm not, I don't roll that way. And right. then uh, <laughs> I looked up, and I saw it said UC, which is University Club in okay. Gainesville. And it says Gainesville's, like, only gay bar. And I was like... Where am I? <laughs> what have I done? I'm not homophobic, but I was like, this is making so much more sense yeah, right? to me. <laughs> and then all my friends were texting me because I came with another group. They're like, where'd you go? And I ran back across the street. And I was like, I was at a gay bar. <laughs> yeah, they were you like, know. what? I was like, I don't know. Change of pace. That's Kids all I needed. I live in my life in the fast lane. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I went a little bit too fast. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's strange. Yes. I've never been in one of those. I've never been to a strip club either because it, it weirds me out. I've not been to a strip club, but I've heard enough stories to get behind it. Yeah. Um, we have a strip club in Gainesville okay. called Cafe Risque. And I like rhyming. Yeah, that's the only strip club. And first, got to tell you about it okay, because it's me, a very yeah. unique strip club. It's okay. not normal. So in not Gainesville, normal. they have strict rules about liquor. Well, Cafe Risque is kind of in like Micanopy and or Ocala, so it's not really in Gainesville. Okay. They don't have a liquor license. So you have to go oh. into the strip club sober. Okay. Um, there is no DJ, and the lights are fluorescent, so it's lit up as light as it is inside this building right now. So there's only fluorescent okay. lighting. <laughs> and All right. The DJ is not there, like I just said. So they have a jukebox. Nothing. Oh. And they are strict about people paying for the music, so the strippers usually put coins in the jukebox to play their music and huh. and it's clean versions of the music so there's no cursing because you don't want that <laughs> at a strip it, club but, but they bear all club. they bear all though but it's a strip club yeah in fluorescent lights yeah really good hamburgers from what i've heard oh and the yeah huh. wow it's um one of the worst places to be <laughs> <laughs> see i always think there's there's two ways to go to strip clubs not that i would know a, by yourself, which is pretty depressing. That's depressing. Or B, with a group of friends, which weirds me out because you're like, hey, you guys want to go get boners together? I mean, if yeah, you boner, want. Yeah, come on. It's so I'll strange. I'll get a boner. You get a boner. Or that's but like, it's not gay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No as long as we don't make eye contact. That'd be like going up to the market like when you're really, really hungry and looking at the meat, and yeah. then you're like paying to look I at it. I can't afford that. It's yeah. just what? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yay. It's so strange. Yeah, they, if I give you money, will you frustrate me? Oh, as my God. That, that's a good point, yeah. I never understood it. I, uh... 
I also know, think tweets their own. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I also think it's kind of funny and very, very sobering when you're not intoxicated. It's fluorescent lighting and the jukebox stops playing music, <laughs> and you're in the strip club and it's quiet. You just hear like squeaking feet. You just hear from, their, like, their like, shoes. The their like butts touching the stripper pole, and it's that streak sound of the metal there, and you're like, oh my god, now I need to leave. But it's the only strip club in Gainesville. So what are you gonna do? Uh, it's not at go or a there. gay bar. <laughs> go to the gay bar instead. <laughs> There's better music, I'm sure. <laughs> Cooler people. They have drag queens there, and they're really awesome. They're That's really cool. good performers. I saw them at Swamp Con a couple of years ago. They sweet. killed it. They were awesome. Sweet, sweet. Very talented well, lady men people. Lady men Ladies. people. Very people. I get confused because some of them are men that identify as women. Yeah. But some of the, it's like, they're, what's they're up? They're great human beings. Hey, yes, what's up, my fellow human? There High you go. fives. You, you killed it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you kill it, and I watch it. So it, we have to we have to address the invisible elephant in the room. Okay. Yes. <laughs> this is not the greatest podcast in the world. It is not. This is uh, just a tribute. You got to believe us. Because <laughs> we, I wish you were we there. may have recorded <laughs> the greatest <laughs> podcast in the world. We recorded the best one. It was. It really was. I've done. I've done. We uh, laughed. We like cried. 20, you, we talked yep. about our first times with certain things. Oh, it was the best like, ever. Oh my god. It was the best. But and we um, realized we weren't recording it. We uh <laughs> yeah. So, oh, no. it doesn't exist. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Except in our memories. Yes. Um, we we uh, did a lot of things <laughs> in that podcast. Yep. Yeah, we uh, we covered all the grounds. Talked about where where we met. Where we met, which we was friends. at Animate. We could, we could just tell that story again. We'll just tell it's, the story. It's a great story. You saw me before I saw you. No, I saw you first because yeah, you're at you Megacon. Yeah, you saw me first. And I was a huge fan of Knights of the Old Republic. It's my favorite video game. Yeah, yeah. You were dressed as Bastila, and I was intimidated, so I just threw my friends in your direction. I was like, look, it's Bastila. Yep. I was I was trying to go to the food area Correct. to go <laughs> get food, and somebody was like, oh, hey, can I take a picture of you? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I left my friends in line to go get food. As you do. And I posed. I did like a really cool pose, like a force push where I was like really kneeling down on the ground and then a whole flutter of people were like, can I take your picture? Can I take your picture? Can I take your picture? And I was like, all right, cool. And my friends got to the front of the line, got their food and I didn't get any food. <laughs> it was because Brian kept sending people <laughs> to take pictures It is. It's true. It's true. And I was like, God damn it. That's what happens. I had no idea why that was happening. Right. Well, you're welcome. And uh, I think. <laughs> And then uh, I didn't know who you were, and I didn't know you knew who I was. And then I took a video of you. You did. Because you were dressed as a cabbage merchant, which I've never seen Avatar. Which, the actually, this interview's movie, over. <laughs> not the other animated movie. Yeah, the series. Um, yeah, I've not seen it. I, my Still? brother watches it. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen the, like, Blue <sighs> Alien movie. That's, I f you know, that's actually the only movie I've ever fallen asleep in the theater to? The... And Avatar. like Shyamalan one? No, well, that one too. No, that that I walked out offended, and I hadn't even seen the show Last yet. Last Airbender. I just know it was bad. Yes. No, <laughs> Avatar: The Blue People. You fell asleep. I fell that? asleep. Oh my god, it was such a pretty movie. It was pretty. It was so yeah. pretty. It just lured me into Neverland. Oh. Fell right asleep. But yeah. So I, I haven't seen it, but you had like a whole bunch of people around you, and you yes. had the whole, uh, wagon, and you were just making funny faces. So I took a video of you for my vlog, and then yeah. I think you commented on it. I did. I was like, oh, that's me. And I was, you're, and like, you're like, oh, that's yeah, me. And I was like, no way. You're like, yeah, you were really busy. So this. And I was like, all right, cool. And then I think it was Animate. You yes. came up to me because you were dressed as Misty. Yes. Yes, I My remember. easy white white basic costume. Yes. Yes. And then we became friends somehow. <laughs> I put my dog on your cart. That's put what it was. my corgi on your cart. That was my cover photo on Facebook for a while. Yeah, I took Cheza and put her up on there. Which is like, hey, here's a dog on your cart. Crowning here. moment. And I was like, oh, and then it's she Cheza. tried to pop a balloon and almost fell off your cart. It's true. It's true. It's what uh, Brian gets. That yeah. Good. So that's that's where we uh, that's became where, friends. That's where we became friends. And then a year or so later, we didn't record a podcast. We didn't record <laughs> it. And then I. Uh, Remember we talked about Jennifer Hale? We did. We did. You cried. I cried meeting Jennifer Hale. And then you cried talking about meeting Jennifer Hale. And I cried in that podcast talking about Jennifer yeah, Hale. That was good. That was oh a good moment. Oh, my God. It was great. It's a good you guys should have been there. You should have been there. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had such a good time. Oh, great times. Oh, man. We talked about how you met David Love. Yes. I met David Love 
but for a couple of years before I started doing cosplay, I went and um, followed Heather and Jennifer Ann. Yep. Well, not her, not Heather Ann. Heather, Heather Leet, Leet and Jennifer Ann. <laughs> and I was hybrid. always looking at their work like a freaking weirdo. Sure. And I noticed that David Love did awesome work, really good composites, yeah. looks amazing. And I was going to school for photography. So I oh, admired him sense. on a photographer's perspective. And I was like, God, he kills it. He can't, I can't do any of this stuff. Sure. I love it, though. And I thought, I was like, I don't model, so there's no reason for me to work with that guy. And then I ended up making a cosplay page after BioWare posted me and told me to make a page so that they could credit me properly. Sure. And um, then, like, I wrote on David Love's page saying, hey, I really like your work. And I was like, don't do that. Don't be like that. <laughs> and then... A week later, I got a message from David being like, hey, I'm making a book. You want to be in it? And I was like, oh, my God, yes. <laughs> and then uh, I shot with him. And then he was like, what are the next costumes you're working on? And I told him. And he goes, all right, when are we shooting them? And I was like, you want to shoot me again? And he was like, yeah, whatever. And then I left the second time, and I did the rest of the costume stuff. And he goes, what are you working on next? You want to come back over? And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so it's like, yes. We've, we've kind of just kept that up. It's pretty awesome. Pretty yeah. awesome. You do good work. I was like, yeah, we uh, we both meet at each other's artistic level of, I don't know, words. Yeah, words. Words, yeah. lots of words. I am a huge fan of his. It's, it's just incredible. He's incredible a great guy. Incredible what he does. He's a cool dude. He's a cool, cool dude. dude. I met He's him in pugs. Tampa. Oh, man, we're going down that rabbit hole. I am obsessed with pugs. He's got two pugs. I see pictures. And like you, that one you posted of the the one scratching itself He's like a person. Scratching like a person. I watched that like four times. I his no, name's Mojo. I follow like I've got like eight hundred people on my Instagram. Half of them are pugs. I am not even kidding. I love pugs. Like you with corgis. Yeah. Times two me with pugs. If there's a pug, I will double tap the picture. I don't even care. It I like weird hearts. shaped animals. Uh, I just look, pugs. They look like you scrunch their face and they're they just look stuck. So concerned. I love all it. All the time. I love it. And they got breathing problems and they're usually fat. They're just, oh I my like God. pugs, they're but I don't ever want to own one. I want to own like an army of pugs. I don't want it because <laughs> I, I can't stand snoring and I can't stand anything with like <laughs> breathing like issues. I, the only time I have a problem with people being people is when they're eating. Okay. I can't stand hearing people eating. <laughs> Pet peeve of Annika Rockwood. I just can't stand it. Like, I just can't deal with it. So <laughs> when pugs are, like, doing stuff with their mouth, I'm like, <laughs> go away. I just, it's taken a while for me to master being deadpan about that. Sure. Because I used to not be deadpan about that. <laughs> I used to get really internally Taking angry. pictures? What are you doing? I'm like, stop me! <laughs> I'm like, so mad. But now I'm just like, I'm just going to stare at you for yeah. a while. <laughs> like, I just really don't like it. But, yeah, that's kind of why I can't deal with pugs. Oh. But they're they're cute. They're the best. Oh, my God, I love pugs. Carrie Howells, David's, David's pug. Yeah. Howells. Oh. Uh, that's amazing. Like, oh, my God, you're so cute. That's one day. One day I will shoot with him. I'm yes. such a big fan. I'm waiting until I get my armor done and get some, like. That's going to be awesome. Because I want to do that, and that way I can at least give him something in return. Be like, dude, I'm a stormtrooper. Whatever you need to use a stormtrooper and stuff. The Han Solo picture we did um, yes. is one where where Han slides out and sees all the stormtrooper and goes, "Nope," and yeah, like yeah. slides back. That's the one photo that we haven't gotten back yet. Uh, and like, dude, that stock could work so well for that. I'm telling that would you, save him I got so that. Much time. And I've got a clone trooper, which will be pretty cool. Put on Geonosis fighting droids or whatever. There you go. But uh, the my the biggest problem I'm gonna have is like maintaining composure with his pugs. Just be like, <gasps> I. I love pugs. It's a weird obsession. Mojo's pretty chill. He doesn't really acknowledge other people because he's yeah. old. And then Carrie's like all up in your business. Oh, man. Like she wants to be your friend. She wants to be all. Chesa up. might be dethroned yes. by Carrie in my book when I meet it. Carrie's pretty needy. Yeah? Yeah. I she's like pretty that. pretty needy. Chesa's not very needy. No, Chesa kind of does her thing. Chesa like will come over to me and be super adorable and be like, I want to cuddle with you. And like she'll lay on me. I'm like, oh, you're the best. And then I'll look over and there's her stupid BB-8 toy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. And like, it's on the other side of my body. And I'll pick it up. She'll be like, oh, my God, oh, my God, you're going to throw it. <laughs> and you're like, were you just buttering me up so I was going to throw it? And she, she, that's exactly what she was doing. <laughs> and like, I was like, why don't you just cuddle me? She's like, no, no, throw it, throw it. And she starts backing up and then growling and being like, Arr, She's, Arr. that makes sense. She, that makes she sense. uses you. She does what she wants. <laughs> yes, she does what she wants. 
That's a, how long have you had Chezza? Uh, she's three years old. Only we, three? I, I've had her since she was eight weeks old. I've seen the pictures of just she's like the little. fluff. Oh she, my God. She was like dark brown. And stubbier legs somehow. They're Super small. Tiny she's little. also a tinier corgi than normal too. Oh really? Yeah. They're supposed to get to 30 pounds and she's only 15 pounds. Oh, they so get she's very fat. Very tiny. Interesting. Interesting. She doesn't like to eat food. Yeah? She's not, she's got to watch out for her figure. She doesn't, like, we have to beg her to eat food. She knows she's going to be in prints. Yeah. So she's conscious about her figure at all times. Funny, she actually hates it when I'm filling out my print orders because for a while there, I had, um, I sold prints with Chezza in them. Yes, I have an autographed one. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ed and Ein picture I have of her, people will request for her to sign the print. And she sees me pull out my box of prints that are actually right behind you. And she'll see the box, and she'll be like, yeah, I'm leaving. And she'll she'll walk <laughs> out of the room. Because, like, I used to paint her paw and, like, press it on the print. Yeah. And she hates it. <laughs> and, like, she doesn't like being dirty. So she's like, no, 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 no. And she, like, gets up and leaves. That's so and funny. And it's, it's, she can't stand it. So I I stopped letting her sign prints now because sure. it makes her upset. So uh, so mine's even more rare now. Yeah, very rare. Yes. Like I have a stamp pad that I could stamp her paw on and put it on the print. She still doesn't like that. She doesn't want. Sure, she knows. She doesn't want to be picked up and messed around with like that. So That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. She's a very independent dog. Don't, she need, don't no need man. don't need no man. <laughs> Not at all. Not one man. But she, um, did you see the video of her being Poe Dameron? Yes. Oh, oh my God. man. We were going to bring her here to be Poe. but You should have. Uh, my roommates wanted her to stay home because... Uh, because my roommates that makes sense. like her a lot. And so yeah. they're like, oh, and you're gone. She like wants to play fetch just like you. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't like fetch. <laughs> throw it. <laughs> throw it, Adam. Throw it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Brian, Brian, Brian is crying here. Mm. You guys are busy. I'll come back. Yeah. Right. Past <laughs> podcast uh, guests, yeah. Yannick and Brian Photography. I've had both of them on. I kind of like shove my head into his hat <laughs> when I hug him. <laughs> Kind of like when it's skew. So, speaking of Poe. Yeah. What did you think of Seven? I freaking loved it. Yeah? You saw it way more times than I did. I saw it nine times. I saw it only twice. And you loved it. I loved it. It Good. was awesome. I cried. Yeah? I cried in the beginning when I, when I was sitting in the theater because I, was, I felt it. I was like, dude, I'm seeing the movie now. I'm sure. seeing it. I'm seeing it. And, like, I looked at my brother and I was like... Oh my God, Blake! I'm seeing the movie, <laughs> and like he was like, "Oh my God, I know!" And then um, when the the scrolling text went by, oh, I yeah. cried, I cried so hard. I feel you. I was oh. I was like computer mode. I was just like analyzing every single thing oh in the frame. I was like, "Oh, yeah. oh no, she's I was wearing like, a next oh week helmet." God, I gotta read the thing. I forgot. I, got, I was <laughs> like, "Luke Skywalker's vanished." Where do you, where do you go? What's going? <gasps> it's the good. first oh, man. time I saw it, it wasn't. It, the movie was great. The movie was great. Yeah. It was bad because I was in a dome theater. And um, uh, I didn't get the greatest seats. So when I had to read the text, I actually had to move my head back and forth while you're reading because the screen was so big. Sure. And the part where Kylo Ren um, holds the blaster in place, yes. I didn't see that. Because uh, when he did that, the blaster went so fast, you had to follow it with your head because the screen was huge. Gotcha. And okay. so I was like, what is he doing? And like he was holding the It looks like he was holding the, the blaster. And I didn't know why his hand was like that. I was like, what are you doing? And then I saw the thing just like s- shimmering in place. I'm like, what the sure. hell is that? I don't, I don't get it. That so makes like, sense. Then we, we saw it again on, uh, on a screen that wasn't distorted. A dome, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. But I would recommend a, the dome in a good spot. And yeah. I cried. Horribly, the like moment. I, I leaned up the part when you hear Han scream, Ben. Oh man! When he screamed Ben, I like got on the edge of my seat and I had my hands over my mouth and I was I, like, no, 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 no. The no. second he walked up there, I was like, this is it, this is it. But what was awful is, <laughs> you know, they have that moment. Somebody next to me just goes, oh my god, he's gonna kill Han. Oh my god, no! I was like. Dude, we all know this is gonna happen, but you don't. The when first he was time. like Ben, I was like, "You're dead! I, you're I, dead! You're dead! F- you're dead!" My first time I saw it, I actually walked out disappointed. Really? Because it was so much to take in, and I'm. You're tearing w- up, man. There's one <laughs> thing I love more than Star Wars, and that's Monique, and that took time. Yeah. I adore Star Wars. I had a pretty awful childhood. I had like a good home life, horrible outside life. Yeah. So Star Wars was very much like escapism for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm here because of Star Wars, and I can honestly Pretty say much, that. you're wearing a 501st Legion yeah, shirt. Yeah, I'm in it. Like, it is so important to me. 
and uh, really, really keeps me going. When stuff's rough, I just put in Star Wars and I detach. And I, yeah, yeah. You know, I've read hundreds of books, all the comics. I'm in it. So episode seven, you know, when they took out all the EU, I was like, well, there's half of my knowledge that I've acquired over years. And yeah. I'm like, I know what happens after six. Well, no, I don't. Yeah. And I was so, I, at first, now I love it. Yeah. At first, I was totally not for Kylo Ren being his son. I was so against it. Like, because you have Jason Solo in the books. And I was like, why would you discredit all the EU and then basically just give us your version of it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so walking out, I was like, what just... I, Han Solo, my favorite character in the old trilogy, was killed by his son? That's what we're doing? Yeah. He's killed by his son, out of all the things. I was like, I, I wasn't upset that he died. I wasn't upset he got killed by the villain. I was upset that the villain was his son and that killed him. Yeah. And just the whole amalgamation of it all kind of really got to me. Yeah. But having seen it more on and more on and more, each time, you know, I picked up something different and then realizing, like, the true tragedy of what happened in that scene. Because, I mean, the scene is the scene. You see it. You pick up what happened. But when you think about, like, Han knew he was going to die the second he said the name. Oh, yeah. And, like... Setting that in, we're like, it's Leia's fault. <laughs> Leia's <laughs> like, if you see our son, bring him home. And yep. he's like, he's gone. We, we need to let him go. She's like, no, there's still light in him. I know it. She's like, I'm going to no, prove to you that he's there's gone. there's not. And Han yeah. knew, but he's like, it's for Leia. Yeah. She went out there, and it, oh, man, it got me It got me so hard. It was so upsetting. It was so, it, I got chills right now. It's, I can't, I can't I just, handle it. I know. When, the moment when he screamed... Ben, I thought one of two things. The first one was, of course, Han's gone now. Yeah. But then I was like, they put those detonator devices on there. Are they both gone? Right. Are they both gone? But no, it didn't work out that way. It, I, that was, that's actually one of the few issues I have with it now is naming him Ben. <laughs> like, why would they name him Ben after, after Ben Kenobi? Kenobi? But Leia never knew him. She knew him as Obi Wan. Yeah. Well, maybe Luke told him. Fucking that's whatever awesome. loopholes, man. I know. I know. They'll but explain it. I'm sure. I like. That's my that's my only thing that I was like that and uh, I mean mind you I've dissected these frame by frame you know as as you do if you're me yeah I mean you've seen it nine times <laughs> yeah and that's I'm just getting started oh, I've yeah. seen the other six over a hundred each oh yeah guaranteed like, yeah way over because uh, did you ever as a kid watch a movie and when it was over just rewind it watch it again Jaws Star Wars and oh, Star Wars Jaws and Star Wars and Balto oh Balto oh man. I pretended Great. I was Balto. I'd run around the house on my legs. Uh, what else do you do? Uh, I still do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running the that's Iditarod, right. and I'm delivering all the medicine to the poor village that's dying right? now. Yeah. I'm me. the one I who saved Balto. Alaska. I'm Balto. Move, Chezza. <laughs> Get out of here. You can be Jenna. <laughs> that's right. Nobody likes Jenna. <laughs> Take the BB-8 toy and throw her. I'll save you. <laughs> oh, man. But I, I loved it. I think... I think eight is going to be better. I think eight's going to be probably the best one. The one issue that I do have with a lot of the people criticizing Force Awakens yeah. is they're like, oh, if it was a standalone movie, it would suck. I'm like, but it's not a standalone movie, exactly. so shove it. That's like, technically, so does Empire. Empire's yeah. half the story. Yeah. Empire no. is, argu everyone says, the best one. They always tell This first half of, se the second half of Empire is Return of the Jedi. Yes. Like, Han gets frozen in carbonite. You find out that Darth Vader's Luke's dead, but then what? You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. The Empire Strike Back by itself is not a complete movie. No. But people don't want to hear that. You know? Exactly. So. But the movies are like, they always do it. Every single movie has a pattern where the first movie, don't ask. Yeah, watch. sets it up. And the second movie, all right, now we're going to explain. The third movie is like, all right, now this is a movie. Exactly. So that's the way it's always been. So why are you criticizing it for being a standalone movie? Because it's not a standalone movie. It's true. It's, it's true. not at all. Oh, my God. When we saw it the second time, yeah. we went to a normal theater. So when we got and we sat down, it was about two weeks after, no, almost three weeks after the movie was out. That's right. So we sat down kind of like in the middle front of the theater, which was the only spot we had. Sure. And there was a group of kids talking behind us. I already seen the movie. Okay. But I mainly Still. did this because, because you know, other people were watching the movie. Yeah. They were talking and couldn't stop talking. And the one part where I chimed in was when this girlfriend looked over to her boyfriend and said, who's that? And he was like, that's Chewbacca. And I looked over, I'm like, why are you in here? I would have done the same. I was thing. like, "Do you not know that this is not a standalone movie? Right? <laughs> why did you? Why did you watch this? You don't know who Stop Chewbacca talking. is." <laughs> and I was just like, "Well, who's? And then who's that?" And they're like, um, "That's Leia." I'm like, "Oh my God, stop!" I would have got so offended. Yes, yeah, so I, I turned around. I was like, "For the sake of everyone in this theater, stop talking." I I did a marathon 
of one through six last year in a day. I like woke up really early in the morning to watch, just watch them all in a day because I, I want to do it. Um, and I was watching it with someone who wasn't really into it and like wasn't following the story. She said, wait, what, what's going to happen now? I was like, I don't know. Watch the movie. In 10 minutes, you'll find out. Oh, so my God. I have a good it story was rough. for that. <laughs> It's not Star Wars, though. Sure. It's my cousin Elise, and if she's listening to this podcast, I don't even care. <laughs> um, so she came down to visit me around my 21st birthday, and we were watching. Uh, during the day, we were, like, hanging out, doing things that you do when you turn 21. So we sure. were really hang hung over during the day. So we tried to mellow out. Not really, because we were watching Game of Thrones. Right, yeah. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> and so I was showing her season one of Game of Thrones, and I was like, you like this show. It's really good. She's just like my grandma. She can't watch shows without asking a million questions. Sure. And saying the same thing over and over again, except for this one thing she said. So we were two episodes before the, the end. Okay. Ned Stark's head's already off. Sure. And she goes, oh, is that our, our, is, is, is that the, the Winterfell? And she's pointing at the Dothraki. She's asking uh, if they're Winterfell, if that's what they are. And my roommate got up <laughs> and left the room, and he closed the door, and you could hear him going, ah, ah, and then he comes back in, and he sits down like normal. <laughs> and I look over at him like, what movie, what show are you watching? What yeah. show have you been watching? It's like, you we're just eight asked episodes if in. <laughs> these people were a geographical location. Oh, my God. I was like, I can't. I just can't. Yeah, right. Just watch it on your own time. I can't yeah, do this anymore. I was like, I Know where I don't know what show you've been watching. <laughs> and I looked over and I was like, no, those are the Dothraki. And she goes, why are they naked? I was like, you should have asked this on the second episode. When right, you yeah. See the when they the started fights. being naked. I don't um, know. Oh, man, that's rough. I'm excited for the new season. Are you? You've yeah. read the books. Um, I have read all the way up to Feast for Crows. Okay. But Feast for Crows was really boring. It's rough. It's a lot of Brienne asking if you've seen a girl. Yes. Like half the book. I haven't read Dance with Dragons. So. It's amazing. But I know that the show is going so off. It's already completely off and past it. So I'm... I think it's George R. R. Martin being like, yeah, I'm not going to get up. I'm not going to catch up. I think the second he knew, like last year, he goes, ah. Sorry, guys. He probably guys. just told him and... He <laughs> he's did. like, I'm going to write books later. My Watch him write exactly what happened in HBO right? instead. I was for it until last season. Like, I loved the show so much that I read the books. And then I read the books and I was like, whoa, you really changed it up here. What's going on? Yeah. But the, the nail in the coffin for me that I was like, I can't, I can't invest anymore was when they killed Barristan. Oh, yeah. I can't. I've talked about it before. Um, Barristan is one of my favorite characters in the books. He's like a living legend. Barristan the Bold. Everybody knows who he is. You know, besides Jamie Lannister, he's one of the youngest Kingsguard. He's so good at fighting. Like, there's a scene in book five when this he's been like a... A Queen's Guard to Daenerys forever, you know, and just hanging out. Well, this guy comes at him. He's like one of the best pit fighters in all of Marine. And the second the dude charges at him, you're in Barristan's head, and he just goes, This is what I live for. Yeah. And it, in three moves, kills the most deadly person he's found. Boom. He's that good, right? So I remember telling me. He hardly had Barristan in there. I know, right? I just remember him being like, I am a knight. And then he throws his like thing yeah. down, and he's like, I'm leaving. So, so dumb. The, like, God, well. I remember I used to tweet at the actor. I'm like, dude, I can't wait to see you fight. I know next season's oh, going to no. be the time. I can't wait. And then I told Monique, I was like, you think this fight's good? Just wait. Wait till Barristan fights. You just wait. Oh, no. So we get to the scene when, you know, you think Grey Worm's going to die. They're surrounded by Sons of the Harpies. Dude falls over. There's Barristan. I paused it. And I was like, Monique, this is it. We've waited five years. This oh, is the no. time. And they killed him. I've never been more, like, upset and really sad and offended and just, like, a swirl of emotion. Like, he can't. He's, he's, not, he's not dead. He's not dead. And then I, when I grieve about series, I read every article I can find. That you agrees know, with you? Yeah. Or, no, because, like, they'll, they'll interview actors after they're killed off a show. Yeah. You know, like, oh, whatever. Well, and the actor's like, I've read the books, and I thought I was going to be there longer. And they told me, like, no, it's your season. It sucks because it's like, that's your paycheck? Yeah. He's and you're got, like, you mean I don't get paid longer? Right. And he, he's a fan of the books, so he was excited for stuff that happens in book five. That's so disappointing. That's not going to happen. Yeah. So I was just like, what? what? I'm, I'm excited so for Game of I think of it's going to be very good. But, but like, the 5,000 pages I've read, I'm like, <laughs> but I kind of, I'm going to watch it. Yeah, it just makes I me mean, really you're sad. not gonna not watch it. Yeah, exactly. Like I mean, Walking Dead has its weakest seasons ever, and I still yeah. watch it. I I haven't read those comics, but I know they're like completely like different. Complete like different series, different series. Oh, I series. know. I know. Uh, 
Glenn's already dead in the comics. Yeah, and like Carol died forever ago in the comics. I freaking love Carol, and I she's, don't know why I love Carol. She's a badass. Dude, she That's lights why. everyone on fire. Yeah. That's her thing. When, That's her holy. Totally when thing. they captured her two episodes ago, I was like, you picked the wrong person. You know, she did Determinus. No, <laughs> no, you didn't kidnap her. She kidnapped That's you. That's right. Yeah. She's, this is what she's letting you believe. She's Rorschach. And then You're she, stuck like, in here with me. Lights the match and just walks away. Yo, yeah. But she wasn't cold-hearted. She's like that. That messed her up. Now that she's gone. Her. Yeah. Yeah. That's rough. I, I don't know if she's gone for real, though, because she's already been gone. Actually, the the weaker seasons of Walking Dead, I've always been like, yeah, screw it. I'm not even going to keep up this season, and then I'll catch up later when I find out that it gets better. Sure. Um, but the season, the episode that brought me back, the most remarkable Walking Dead episode that I that I liked, sure. which is brutal, was the one where she had to kill the kid. Yeah, look at the flowers. the kid, yeah, oh my God. That made me cry, man. Oh, that man. made me feel. The little girl she kills the, the other one. She zombies mice and stuff, and then she was like, you're not a zombie, but I got to stab the crap out of you because you're one fucked up kid. Yep. I was like, get it. Good time. Two minutes? We have a panel at two? I thought it was at 11. 11. That's why I was hauling ass to get here. <laughs> I thought you knew. No. All right. I might be wrong. Okay. We can, we can always right. pause and we can pause bring it back. It, yeah. No worries. Is Momo here? Uh, yeah. No, yeah. you're fine. You met Carlos, right? Yeah, I went to your That's panel. Fine, Carlos. You were yeah. Mad Max. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Big fan. I love your stuff. All right. His ma have you seen his Mad Max? Yeah, Carlos is my bro. He's a ma his, he has like the actual medals, like from the thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I know. I would just panel like is, a year um, or two ago. Cool dude. Carlos Blanchard. He uh, is helping me with a giant armored project that Ooh. I've been working on. The one that you can't talk about? The one that I can't, I can't talk about. The one that I know about? It's been, there's been some like minor drama with it. So yeah. it's been like, it's been like, I'm glad I'm not talking about it because I get skeptical about it even happening. And then I'm, and then I'm glad that. I'm still not talking about it because I'm not sure if it's going to happen, but it's most likely going to happen, so I don't know. That makes sense. But Holy um, crap, it's a mighty duck. No way. Oh, my God. We should have our hands in and do the duck chant. Yeah. <laughs> duck, 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 duck. That's amazing. Somebody's dressed as a mighty duck. That's I hardly fantastic. remember that movie. I just remember the hand. D2 Mighty Ducks, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of something completely unrelated, cosplay. That's yes, what you cosplay do. cosplay that we should talk <laughs> about, right? That's what you do. So, all right, what is a question that you were tired of hearing? What got you into cosplay? What got you into cosplay? Um, you never have to answer this question again. Just refer them to this What podcast. got me into cosplay? I love everyone. I'm completely positive all the time. I absolutely love life, and I love living, and I love mm. costumes all the time. Smiley face. Mm. Hashtag Danica Rockwood. Hashtag positivity. <laughs> hashtag yeah. overdramatic. Hashtag cosplay is Hashtag politically correct. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag stiff. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag hashtags for comedy. No, really. I, a video game company found a picture of my costume after my friend was like, hey, you know, cosplay's fun. You should go to a convention. And I dressed up. And then Bioware found the picture and spammed it and said I should make a cosplay page. Made a cosplay page. People were, like, following me and crap, and it was awesome and weird. Sure. And they were telling me I should keep making costumes, and I have. And then uh, that's, uh, that's why I do it. Okay. Um, what's your favorite cosplay? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't say the next one. Ooh. 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 The one I haven't made yet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, it depends on what I'm doing. That's a good answer. It depends on what show I'm at. I usually like, I like, I like my comfier costumes because I don't feel angry when I'm wearing them. That makes sense. Yeah. So like, sense. Ash is cool because I can scream my boomstick really loud, and then True. Han Solo is cool because everyone knows who Han Solo is. Yeah. Um, Triss is cool, but not not wearing it in Florida because no one gets it. Ah, uh, that makes sense. The video game company uh, show, the video game conventions shows like PAX. PAX, yeah. yeah. I don't have to explain myself. Yeah, I you just know. walk up and they're like, "Oh yeah, you're Triss. Oh yeah, you're Bastila." Sure, like, you're Florida's very anime. I don't really fit in. <laughs> yeah, I feel I, I've I've learned. Yeah, Florida's very very anime centric. Like very. And I'm not. I'm I'm not either. I, I love Avatar, but that was a yeah. recent development for me. All my stuff is Star Wars now. I'm like, I don't even care anymore. Yeah, I mean, I get, I've gotten um, asked if I was uh, 
Okay, well, let me change the story. There was a little <laughs> five-year-old girl who came over to me and goes, oh, my God, I love your costume. And I was, she didn't really say that. She wasn't that articulate, but she just got really excited about my costume. And her mom was like, oh, she loves, she loves Star Wars. And I was like, oh, awesome. And she got over and she hugged me and wanted pictures with me. And she was, can I tell you a secret? And I was like, yeah. And I leaned in because she wanted to whisper in my ear. And she was like, when I grow up, I want to be Princess Leia just like you. And I was like, I am not Princess Leia, you five-year-old child. <laughs> You're but wrong. I was, I was like, just oh. yell at her. <laughs> I was like, you can be whatever you want to be. It's smiley face. I'm Basil Sean. And I walked away. <laughs> Just whisper like, that to it. her. <laughs> like, I'm not Leia. You're wrong, and you should feel bad, you five-year-old. <laughs> was it going to be Learn that your game? facts. <laughs> I was like, wow, five-year-olds played the 2003 game of yeah, Knights right? of the Old Republic. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. So that's, all right, so what's your most comfortable cosplay? I asked Alexia that one. Ash? Yeah? I'm, like, wearing Shirt jeggings. And pants. These are jeggings. These aren't even... Jeans? Jeggings. I'm Jean against leggings. pants that bad. Uh, I've heard you're these, anti-pants. These look... Actually, I'm not really anti-pants. I feel like I should totally explain that to people, people <laughs> that, are, that are following me. Always oh, yeah. Actually, that's a good idea because... Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they address this one. There's so many things. I'm going to address this. Yeah, let's do so, this. Um, let's, get, let's get into the whirlpool the that is... The whole no Danica pants Lockwood. thing. Let's explain it. So, when I go to a shoot with David, late, not lately, but in the past, before Patreon... Uh, I wasn't trying to do modeling. I actually never wanted to do modeling whatsoever because I thought it was vain and I was against it and I just didn't see the point. Sure. It's like, no, this is stupid. Why is taking a photo of your face important? It's dumb. So I never really gave it much thought. So I'd always pack costumes, constantly sure. costumes. And then I was like, oh, cool, a nerdy shirt. Nerdy right. shirts are cool. And then David's been like, where's your pants? I'm like, I didn't think of that. <laughs> and so... Um, it's like whatever. No one's gonna care if I don't have pants on. It might like it might make it better, or whatever. Sure. And so, every time I forget to bring pants, I only bring my costumes and whatever clothes I'm wearing that day. <laughs> and then I'm like, damn it! And I'm usually like going over there in sweatpants and like looking like crap before I put makeup on and go and shoot. So I'm I always I just forget to bring pants. Sure. I'm not that against pants. Pants are all right with me. <laughs> pants are okay. You're I not just, necessarily for them. Yeah. I've but just you're definitely kind of not em- against them. I've kind of embraced that. But yeah. I'm like now David makes the joke where he's like, "Did you bring pants this time?" I'm like, <laughs> "Like last shoot, I brought skirts. I didn't bring skirts, pants." Skirts. That's a thing. But yeah, skirts are. Skirts are all right. Yeah? You all right with skirts? I'm all right with skirts. Shorts? You all right with shorts? Shorts. I wear shorts a lot. Shorts are good? Yeah. I like pants. I don't like khaki pants. Yeah? Like work pants? I don't think I own any of those. That's okay. I may own one pair. Like work pants? Like pleated work pants? Those suck. Yeah? I don't like those. Yeah. I'm I'm bad at clothes and fashion and stuff. So am I. It's awful. I have more costumes than I do. Yeah? uh, regular clothes like for christmas i was going to like a family event where they go to a church and they all look nice and sure i'm like well i have freddy krueger <laughs> yeah no, <laughs> that counts. Have, that's christmasy <laughs> i don't really have any things that's for christmas anymore because i'm mostly wearing stuff that's got paint covered all over it or i have good point good point yeah. cosplay probs hashtag yes i should bring my 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 morgan staff to the church and yeah, yeah like, there you go. it's not okay right it's just shepherd staff yeah. counts translates depends yeah. who you ask <laughs> But what other cosplay questions? What I've other gotten? cosplay questions? Um, what is a dream cosplay of yours? Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. If skill and money are no object. Oh my god, that's the most. Everyone. Th- the problem is, is that everybody <laughs> thinks it's the most unique question, and it's just not. I know. I know. I know, because you're a cosplayer and you've been interviewed. I mean, you know, um, I interview myself mostly. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna keep saying the same damn costume every time. It's Jack from Mass Effect. Yeah. Money is not. The problem. My it's boobs are the problem, and my hair. Yeah, boobs. That's my, my boobs are overqualified. Too big for Jack. Yeah, makes uh, sense. People are like, "Nah, dude." Anyway, I'm like, "No." People are gonna think I'm trying to do a sexy Jack, yeah. Jack, and I'm not. And uh, that's a problem I don't have. Yeah. Yeah, I just not really working with a whole lot up top. I've been working out more, and I lost a half of a half cup of my boobs. That. So is like, a thing. That's happening. Yeah. And um, still not, still not worthy for Jack yet. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say I'm I like, could do Jack. Yeah, you could do Jack. <laughs> oh my God, you should. Uh, no, I couldn't do it justice. I mean, I, I can do Miranda. Yeah, yeah, that was not good. Jack. That right, was you've good. never played Mass Effect, did you? I haven't. I played the demos. Did you I'm like just it? really, really bad at first person. 
like everything. That game got me better at doing headshots. It got me better at doing a lot of things first yeah. person. I just get scared. You get I, scared? Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I get remember too stressed out too. I did. Um, my my girlfriend's dad is a huge gamer, like obsessively into Xbox and video games, and is all into it. And uh, I remember a bunch of years ago, he was playing Left 4 Dead. Yeah. And he's like, hey, come on, Brian, sit down and play a game with me. I was like, all right, yeah, girlfriend's dad, whatever. I'll play a game with you. And we're playing Left 4 Dead. Oh, my God, Left 4 Dead. Uh, zombies run fast in that game. Yes, they Spoiler do. Spoiler alert. Uh, was not prepared. And I, I'm good until something gets close to me. Then I'm all over the place. I just scream and shoot and don't hit anything. Then I'm that dead. That sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, first person's not my game. A third, I, don't know I play if it's Battlefront. Left 4 Dead's controls or what, but I used to think that first-person shooters were not my jam because uh, I'd play as Zoe. I hate Zoe. Yeah. <laughs> I freaking hate Zoe. And um, there's a ladder, and then the zombies come at you, and they try to make you jump scare and get stressed out, so you have that Experience. problem with, <laughs> yeah. with the screen. Yeah, sure. Trying to climb the ladder, and then zombies were coming at me, and I was trying to frantically climb the ladder, and I kept falling off the ladder oh. over and over and over again. That makes sense. And then I was like, oh, I'm up, I'm up. And then I would start going up to the side and fall down. <laughs> then you're like, oh not. Oh, my God. Um, what was the favorite convention? PAX. PAX, yeah. PAX, PAX, PAX is, is good. awesome. Who is your favorite cosplayers? <laughs> Who is <laughs> your favorite <laughs> cosplayers? <laughs> huh. They change all they the time. Of course. Um... Uh, my favorite that has been in the list for a very long time has been Miss Sinister. Oh, she's amazing. Because she's freaking gorgeous. She's unique looking. She doesn't give a crap. All right, we got to go? I got to go do my panel really quick. Sweet. Uh, All right. Pause. 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 Pause.